What about using insects as a protein-rich food source? Duskona Nyarvald was one of the first viewers to suggest insect farming as a source of protein. Even on Earth, there are some who think this will help solve the problems with feeding our exploding human population. The thing is, you still need to feed those bugs something to grow. On Earth, we have loads of plant material we can use to feed those insects. Even piles of produce that go to waste because they don't conform to our standards of aesthetics. In fact, in the US alone, 80 billion pounds, or around 37 billion kilos of food, go to waste because they don't look right. But on Mars, even the funny looking food grown for humans isn't going to go to waste. Let's take a look at the insects being farmed for human food on Earth presently, as found in a bag of mixed dried bugs on Amazon that sells for about $1.20 per gram. At the same price per gram, a quarter pound hamburger patty would cost you about $115. The average sedentary male on Earth requires a minimum of 56 grams of protein daily, so roughly four of these bags if the bugs are about 100% protein. The average human female only requires three such bags. Let's break down some of the basics for each of the bugs found in this bag. First up, grasshoppers. They develop from eggs into nymphs and then into adults in about nine weeks, their life expectancy approximately one year. They are pretty much omnivores requiring vegetation and other insects to feed upon. Their favorite foods are clover, cotton, wheat, and other cereal grains and grasses. Average weight of an adult grasshopper is 300 milligrams, so each male colonist would require 180 of these daily to hit their required protein intake. Call it 60 grasshoppers per meal. Next up are crickets. Very similar to grasshoppers in many ways. They also develop from an egg to a nymph to an adult, and they weigh in about 300 milligrams on average, with some females significantly heavier. However, these insects only live about 90 days, which is less than half the expected trip time, and since experiments on the ISS have demonstrated difficulties in hatching eggs in space, this creates an issue. Crickets are also omnivores with a taste for grains and grasses, as well as animal matter. And again, each colonist would need to eat about 180 of these per day to keep up their protein intake as the effects of space are withering away their muscles. Mealworms. Favorite delicacy of many captive pet lizards, mealworms are the short-lived pupil state of darkling beetles before their metamorphosis. Meaning that there is a very small window where these worms are edible and they don't reproduce until they become adult beetles, but those are much less palatable. The adult beetles require fresh produce that can't be moldy and are particularly fond of fruit tree produce, such as apples, oranges, or pears. So for reasons of their diet, mealworms probably wouldn't be a candidate for space food. Also, at 130 milligrams apiece, colonists would require about 450 of these in their daily diet. Silkworms are another insect harvested in the middle of their life cycle before becoming an adult silk moth. The entire life cycle of a silk moth from egg through larvae, cocoon, and adult moth is a mere six to eight weeks. Silkworms from the Bombyx mori moth kept in captivity grow to a relatively large two grams per, but they are fed a diet that consists only of chopped mulberry leaves. Likely this restricted diet of the silkworm would also exclude it from consideration. Sago worms wrap up this list. They are the larval stage of the sago palm weevil, with a total life expectancy from egg through larvae through metamorphosis into the adult weevil between 7 and 10 weeks. Again, that's shorter than the trip to Mars will take, so proving the worm can reproduce in space would be key. Even though these tasty mouthfuls can grow to about the size of your little finger, weighing 2.5 grams, they dine exclusively on immature, living, and decomposing sago plants, so they're not a good choice either. One other insect commonly cited for this type of farming is the cockroach, but being blunt, intentionally introducing the cockroach to any environment would be an act of stupidity. None of the other insects on this list would cause much inconvenience or damage if their colony escaped. Cockroaches, on the other hand, could be a nightmare. Narrowing down the list for practical purposes, the sago worm, silkworm, and mealworms would be poor candidates due to their dietary restrictions and four-stage life cycles. That leaves grasshoppers and crickets, since both are eaten in their adult form and can be consumed after they've laid their eggs. Except that the life cycle of a cricket is significantly shorter than the transit time to Mars, so if these insects can't reproduce in space, they will die off in a single generation, which leaves grasshoppers as the long-lived omnivore that can eat a variety of plant and animal materials. But they're hungry little things. 
Grasshoppers eat 30 to 100 milligrams of plant material in dry weight per day. So the 300 milligram morsel you raise will have gone through about 21 times its body weight in other organic material by the time it is a fully grown edible adult. In the meantime, as they are digesting their green plant material, they are creating poop that leaches methane and nitrous oxide that will again have to be dealt with using extraction methods. Now for a crew of 100 on a starship, if grasshoppers were the only available source of grown protein, they would require a breeding and extraction program capable of producing 18,000 grasshoppers per day. With a required pipeline of nine weeks from egg to adult at any given time, there would need to be 1.134 million living insects, plus the egg producing breeding colony alive on the ship at various stages of development. And with their 100 milligram dietary requirement per insect daily, they would need to be provided with around 113.4 kilograms of food per day. On a six month trip, that adds up to 20 tons of grass or grain on board just to facilitate the insect breeding program until they reach Mars. That's if the insects can breed in space, which is unlikely. Also, grasshoppers cannot be eaten raw, as some of the worms can, so the ship will require a cooking facility capable of processing 18,000 bugs a day. These insects, if eaten raw, can make you very ill and infect you with parasites. And one thing is for certain, if you're planning on eating those bugs whole, you'd better make sure there's plenty of these supplies packed along for the ride. So as we've demonstrated, insect farming doesn't really seem to be the way of the future, at least anywhere other than possibly Earth, when you're hunting for food with Bear grills. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic. Feel free to add your unanswered questions about Starship or Mars colonization in the comments below so we can consider including them in upcoming episodes. Visit our discussion panels on Instagram, Reddit, and Facebook, as well as our YouTube community page. Give the video a thumbs up, share the video, and hit subscribe so you'll be the first to know when The Common Sense Skeptic returns.